quickie in the morning. Let's get this started at the fastest answer. Car, six speed, LS430. Fault code for the torque converter circuit or the lockup solenoid. Guys will say, you have to pull the pan off to check the solenoids. We can check the solenoids from the ECU without pulling the, the transmission pan off and get a really accurate diagnosis of not just the solenoids, but whether it could be a wiring fault as well. If you've got a hard shift, it's often the ECU, but also servicing that transmission, which is meant to be a lifetime service. It isn't. We're going to talk, discuss that in another video, though, by the looks of it. So don't have to pull the trans band off to check solenoids. We can do it at the ECU. Now, if you want to know more, you want the longer expanded version, watch the rest of the video. G'day, guys. It's Galvin from the Couching Company in New Zealand. We're going to be working on a six-speed LS430. This is a 2005 model. They started producing them in 2003, late 2003, through to 2006. This one's got a transmission problem. It's got a very, very noisy whine. I'm not sure whether that is going to be a past air whine or a torque converter whine. Uh, so the transmission problem that this has is sometimes when it's cold, it doesn't go. Put it into drive, it's like it's got a neutral. And you wait 10, 20 seconds, or you have to bring the revs up a little bit higher than normal before it engages and takes off. And that's slippy, and it's a bit funny. Generally, when it's warm, it actually seems to drive okay. It did have a hard shift. Now, there's going to be a couple of parts to this video too. And one of them is, uh, these things have a hard shift. And the last owner kept driving it with a stuffed ECU, and it's resulted in a stuffed transmission. It's cool. We are going to attempt to diagnose the issue. We're going to attempt to service it and save the box. Oh, the transmission. And be careful. I interchange over here. We very often call it just a box. So if, if you hear me say that, I'm referring to the transmission in the car. As opposed to a gearbox, which we generally use as the word manual. But I might throw that in there as well, just okay, because it's a automatic gearbox, which it isn't actually, it's a transmission. Now, there's lots of stuff here. Now, the six ATs, automatic transmission, six speed automatic transmission, don't have a dipstick. The only dipstick is the guy that keeps driving it with a stuffed ECU for a hard shift problem. But to check the transmission fluid, there's no dipstick, so we're going to do that. Um, I am kind of just the, the, the planning of this one we may end up doing the checking of the solenoids from the ECU first and then I may do a second one where we go service the transmission now this car also has a fault code now the fault code is for the lockup converter now so what, what the computer saying is it's saying that the lockup converter isn't working or it's saying that the circuits aren't functioning correctly for the lockup converter. And, and how's it seeing this? What's it doing? What's it, why is it bringing on that code? You've got a speed sensor at the back of the transmission. You've got a input speed sensor or a front clutch sensor. You've got a transmission, which a lot of guys don't understand quite how a transmission works either. And that, so we'll do a very brief, very brief one. We've got a a turbine which we call a torque converter so it's got like fins here fins and then on this side it's got another set of fins and these fins when they're turning create fluid movement and uh, it pushes the other fins so the fluid movement like a normal turbine like a power plant when you drop water into a turbine it turns the second one and that's that's how the transmission gets its power from the engine to into the transmission. And then it's got another component in there called the lockup clutch. Or, and that removes all slippage from the torque converter. 
Of course, when the turbine's spinning here and it's not actually physically engaged, it's just relying on that fluid movement, there can be some slippage. And that's fine. The transmission will work as it should with that little bit of slippage, but then when you're wanting to get the best fuel economy, you don't want that slip, so you lock up the converter. So it's then measuring, the, it knows the engine speed, and it knows the, the front input speed, and it knows the rear speed. So in this case, it's got an engine speed, it's saying there's 3,000 RPM, let's say, oh, we'll, we'll go cruise 1,000, let's go 2,000. Cruise RPM of 2,000 RPM going in the front of the transmission, and then the input shaft past the torque converter, that should also be doing 2,000 RPM. And when it isn't, the ECU goes, well, the converter's meant to be locked up, there's meant to be a one-to-one -one ratio of drive through the torque converter, therefore, the torque converter solenoid isn't working. So it's detecting slip within the unit. Then the computer then throws the fault code. Oh, I've got a funny shadow happening. We've got daylight savings here now. The sun is shining, it's right behind that pole right there. But it's fantastic, it's lovely to see some sunshine. So when these throw a fault code, a lot of guys just don't know how to solve it, don't know how to check it. And so they'll say, well, we have to check the solenoid, so they have to pull the pan off. You don't. We're not pulling the pan off until later, until I surface it. We're going to check the solenoids from the ECU. So we're going to check the solenoids at these plugs here, at the ECU. A, B, C, D, E, F. And we're going into the E plug on the ECU. And we're going to, going to, I'm going to start with the shift solenoids. So S1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so numbering of plugs. So we start from here, we go on the back. Uh, so 1 to 7, 8 to 19. When I flip them around, they're going to be in here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, it's actually not 10, but that's the, I'm in the wrong ones. Double check everything. We actually need to go to 16. So we're 16, 17, 18, 19. So we're actually, we're actually 19, 18, 17, 16. S1, S2, S3, S4. That's going to be really easy to get at. Right, I'm firing up my new Worth multimeter. So I'm attempting to replace my uh, two for $29 Dick Smith, Smith specials. So I'm just popping a pin uh, into the computer box. Now pop a pin into the right hole here. Oh, I'm going to S1. I'm going to put one side of the multimeter to an earth. In this case, I'm going to the battery, and then I'm going on to this one here. And that's because the, the solenoids ground through the body of the ECU. Sixteen point seven, sixteen point eight ohms. And I just work my way along all four solenoids, shift solenoids. So by doing it this way, of course, I am checking the wiring as well. So I know it's going all the way down to the transmission, through the solenoid plug on the side of the transmission, into the transmission, into the solenoid. That one's a little bit lower, but number four often is. I'm completely happy with that. And of course, those are, are shift solenoids. They're not the, the faulty uh, one that we're looking for, or the where the issue is the code is indicating a problem. So that's the, the four shift solenoids tested. Another thing guys, uh, we've got the S1, S2, S3, S4. There's another one in there. It's called SR. Let's check that one as well. 
it's a single wire and we can also check the transmission temp sensor from the ECU as well and so that's often a good idea if that's, that's giving faults. The other way of testing these is it is possible to power up each one, fire some voltage in it, and listen or have them click. We can also uh, then connect up either an amp gauge or a scope, oscilloscope, to actually watch the pattern turn on and off. And that can be some a really good way of diagnosing your solenoids. And if you do all three tests, um, so resistance, check, and power them up with amps and a scope, then you're gonna get a really good idea of what's going on with those solenoids. I think I'm gonna check the other bits, uh, the other tests, or we, we might do a test on a five speed one. So um, this information, of course, applies to all transmissions, not just LS 430s, six speed ones, it applies to the five speeds as well. But of course there are some different logic in there and the pins have changed on between them. Right, next I'm going to check the lockup solenoid. Lockup solenoids are two wire solenoids, so I need to test between the, the two wires. I'll get a couple of alligator clips for this one. So the, the voltage comes from the ECU and the uh, earth is also supplied, or the trigger is also supplied by the ECU. So I pop into the correct pins for the lockup. I'm just going to clip my leads on here and here, and we don't want them to touch. Not because it'll do damage, it's because it'll give me the wrong reading. And just a note, um, if your reading isn't as expected, you might be in the wrong hole. I'm sure you guys have been told about the wrong hole before, if such a hole, if such a thing exists. There we go. So there's uh, the first of the PWM solenoids in the transmission. And then I'm actually going to move on next to the, the actual lockup solenoid, which happens to be in these pins here. So this is the one that is this the ECU is coming up as being faulty. Now actually, I'm not, I'm not, don't mind this little uh, moldy meat. It's, I, I'm not. Oh, is that because I'm touching things? That is because I'm touching. So I was getting strange readings just down here because my wires were touching. So that is well with where I would expect it to be. I am going to very quickly whip through the other ones. 24, 25. And you can see these solenoids are all coming up very, very close to each other. Well, there's that wrong hole thing again. So very quickly, we've diagnosed that the solenoids aren't Faulting on this vehicle and the biggest fault actually occurs at cold so that's why I've tested it while it's cold another thing you can do of course is test it when it's cold and then again when it's hot and check for a variance within them and if there is a wide amount of variance then there's a solenoid problem if you get open circuits solenoid or wiring so I would then retest down by the transmission itself I can also check the speed sensor resistances from the ECU. Uh, let's, well, sure we might as well do that while we're here. I'm going to split the servicing of this transmission into a separate video, so let's get in and we'll check the speed sensors. All right, I'm down here again. So speed sensors are in, a, in and out sensor. 
So two wires, both running to the ECU. There's just the two of them. And it, of course, the code it's got, it's showing that there is some slippage through the torque converter. So of course, if the speed sensor is faulting, it could give us a that kind of a fault. 2021, I'm checking the front one first, 2021. And of course, I'm all backwards, so it should be these two. So that's one speed sensor right there. That's the one that's actually on the torque converter. And then the one at the back of the transmission happens to be right next door to it. And it's really cool that <clears throat> most of these are in the same place. So we've also checked both of the speed sensors. Of course, we could oscilloscope the speed sensors as well. And of course, we can use the live data from the scan tool to help with this diagnosis process. This one is giving speed sensors like it should when I drive it. I've already checked that. Uh, the shift logic, the, the transmission, or the ECU is driving the transmission as it should do. And this one's actually had a tested ECU fitted to it. Uh, Cullum happened to buy a second car that didn't have a transmission fault. And we've reflashed it and used the ECU out of this, or out of his that other car into this car. So his ECU is actually, his original stuffed ECU is about to go for a repair overseas. So as you can see, very quickly I can diagnose the solenoids. I haven't even lifted the car on a hoist. And these guys saying that you have to pull a pan off, they simply aren't aware of some of these modern techniques of checking this stuff that's so, so easy. And in fact, anyone that can use a multimeter and can probably have to make up a little tool, got very small holes, or get some pins, a little bit of, you could use a paper clip. Probably want to just put a linisher off the sides of it to make it a little bit squarer. You miss his hair clip. Any of those sorts of things that can get into that hole very carefully and not damage the pins, you can use to probe the pins. And then the multimeter. I've just been using my Worth, which is an auto scan. I don't, don't normally use the auto scan, but I do like this function. It's working very, very well. It is, it is actually a quite a good quality multimeter. So I hope that's been helpful in showing how to check solenoid resistances from the ECU. Of course, it does apply to five speeds as well. It applies to the four speeds of the ECUs inside on, the, on the, some of the four speeds um, and different cars. So I hope that's been helpful. And we'll talk to you soon. We'll catch you later.